and I don't ever want to go back to living a negative perspective. I So that's why I work so hard at it with the journaling and the meditation and the yoga and the affirmations. And there's a whole science behind it of how to have a good, happy life. For the next year, try to tell yourself you're a happy, positive person rather than telling yourself you're depressed with anxiety and watch your life change. And I know people are like, fuck you. You can't choose that. I'm, I'm saying you can because I did. I used those words and it took me a year. And the first thing that I realized was, okay, I cannot change anything in the past. All I can do is go forward with a different perspective and a different attitude. And, and not to say that, you know, we don't need negative stuff because that's where the growth is, right? The negative shit is really what pushes us through to be better versions of ourselves if we can get through it. And then the things that we say to ourselves, the, the words that we use to describe ourselves is so important. You know what I mean? Welcome to the Collaborative Resource Hub by Wellness Provisions. Our mission is to bridge the gap between mental health, wellness, and music, specifically rock and roll. I'm Amy McBride, owner of Wellness Provisions, the most badass wellness business. Wellness Provisions supplies rock and rollers with high quality supplements. We give you a trustworthy place to go where you can essentially shop blindfolded. Our wellness kits were created out of a need to simplify your shopping experience and make it stress-free. You'll get the most effective nutrients in the least amount of bottles with the least trial and error. Immerse yourself in the Collaborative Resource Hub by going to our website where you'll have access to helpful resources that can nudge you in the right direction. Let's inspire each other. If that guy did it, so can you. Find the Collaborative Resource Hub interviews on YouTube, all major podcast platforms, and subscribe to our newsletter to stay in the loop. Last but not least, my legal disclaimer, nothing in this interview or the Collaborative Resource Hub substitutes medical advice. Please connect with your GP if you need medical guidance. Stacy with Bad Cop, Bad Cop, how are you? Woo! I'm very good today. How are you? I'm doing well. Um, so yeah, we've been like chatting for probably 20 minutes, actually, <laughs> my alarm. we've been chatting for 20 minutes and then we realized we should start recording. So here we are. Yeah. Um, yeah. how would you describe your band to someone who hasn't heard you guys before? Huh. We are, a, we're kind of a rock band, punk rock band, um, with four ladies so we're very uh female voiced uh yeah. we have three part harmonies um it's real slick and um uh produced nicely it's uh i would say gosh that's a that's a hard question i've never been asked that question how would i describe it we we're a punk band but it's yeah. it's fast and melodic and has really great singing. And our drummer is just a maniac and hits super hard. And um, yeah, and I'd say that like the go goes on crack. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, um, that was a very thorough answer as well. Most people, they do get stumped, which is funny because you're just like describing your band. Um, right. Everyone's like, uh, we're punk and like, that's it. So that was super, um, <laughs> good uh, visual <laughs> it's deep um, yeah so would you say bad cop bad cop is mission driven like are there changes that you want to kind of like create in this in society yeah a hundred percent i think our first release and uh our our first ep that fat didn't put out it was like our self-titled and our first record were before I changed my life and perspective. So I think it came from a different, uh, sadder, sick place where I thought it was cool mm -hmm. to be bummed. <laughs> you know, like artists and musicians need to be fucking bummed to write good art. Um, and then when I got better, I came back to the band and I said, I'm not interested in being weird, judgmental, jealous, um, all the things we've been doing to each other. Like I want to hear your songs. I want to play your songs. I want to, I don't think we should have any problems if we're open and honest with each other. I mean, this is all the things that the universe was just slapping me with. I was like, cah, 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 okay, okay, okay. So, <laughs> and then going back, you know, and then writing our warriors record, um, <clears throat> I didn't know what to do because I'd always come from this perspective of negativity. Um, and then to change some things like our song broken, it, I started with, 
I'm broken. What an easy way out. And then I didn't know what else to say. I was going to go into some negative shit. But then I had to like figure out how to turn that into something that was meaningful and positive. And in doing that, the whole record turned out to be that way because we were all in that headspace. And that really defined who we are as a band in terms of talking about things that are important to humanity. Um, you know, it, important. My big thing is like as much as you have been in, in in well-being for 20 years and it's your life. It's like, since I got the opportunity to change my life, I feel like the universe really wants me to uh, help other people get here. Yeah. And so that is my purpose in what I do in my songs. Yeah. And the girls do as well. I mean, a lot of it is self-awareness. A lot of it is self -lo talking about self-love. A lot of it is sticking up for other people. A lot of A lot of it is... Uh, fighting back though, you know, even using the word fighting, I don't like using, you know what I mean? It's like, it's just, it has it's, a bad it, connotation, but yeah. And it puts yeah. you in that space, right? It's like, I don't want to be in the space where I'm fighting against anything. I, and I learned that through having cancer. Cancer was like, you know, don't say you're fighting cancer because then you're in a battle with it and it's got power. Right. And I, <clears throat> so, you know, you say you're cancer free and things like that, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I my know. journey I, with cancer. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. The, the way you, it's your perspective, you know, and um, I've heard that before with the cancer thing is you don't want to say that like you're fighting it. It's yeah. Like put a positive and the same, it. right. And the same goes with like um, with anything. Right. So it's like, if you, you could go out and protest and be mad and mad, 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 about things and fuck yeah you should be because this world is the reality that's been set up has been based in negativity mm -hmm. it's mostly negative right so it's like i understand why people are so bummed at all of the injustices that are in this world but i do believe that the only way out of it is person by person perspective and spreading spreading kindness and love and happiness and positivity on the other side because it spreads. And once you get people involved in that, then that's going to be something that takes over rather than the fight, right? And and you can't fight a fight with anger. It's like anger and anger doesn't get anything done. Yeah. But if you meet if you meet the problem where it's at and try to untwist it and understand it and relate to it in some senses, uh, I believe that's how we could can really fix things. Well, like I agree because I always <clears throat> find it ironic that the, you know, everything is anti this, anti whatever ism, and I'm like, shouldn't it just be compassion, just like pro love? Yeah. Why is it right. an anti thing to me? I'm just like that's just more fuel and hate. Like that's not right. It's weird. But you can't even, I mean, when we were talking earlier about, you know, everybody's got these things, right? And it's like, you can't, we can't, it's like, ah, but it's like, if, if our reality for most human beings on this planet is one of, of, um, you know, even though there's gleaming moments of positive stuff, but like a negative perspective, it's like, just nothing's going to get done in any, <laughs> any real, real way. Yeah. It's just going to keep us there. It perpetuates and it keeps us exactly where we are. Yeah. And, and and not to say that, you know, we don't need negative stuff because that's where the growth is, right? It's like the negative shit is really what uh, pushes us through to be better versions of ourselves if we can get through it mm -hmm. and not get hung up on it, you know, yeah. learn from it. What is this teaching me? Why am I feeling this way? How can I get past this? Yeah. Um, why I don't want to be here anymore. So what do I got to do to not be here anymore? Yeah. And that's what I was going to ask you was how, um, I guess, how do you deal with like difficult uh, situations or staying positive like what kind of like mantras or like what do you incorporate to like stay on the level with that well first and foremost i don't uh, there's a bunch of things i journal i uh i meditate i do yoga uh those are big ones but then there's you know um I don't watch anything on tv that is like those murder shows or anything that's like uh, you know, intensely filled with drama. Uh -huh. um, I don't, any of that kind of stuff. I just, I watch house hunters and international house hunters and things that are pretty. And you know what I mean? It's like, <clears throat> and I had to come to that because like, 
after I got better, I was talking to you earlier about my Xanax addiction and coming out of that was um, what really helped me change my perspective. And I realized one night I put on some records and it was like, at first I couldn't even listen to punk rock. I could only listen to jazz and pop. You know what I mean? Because it was like free and pretty. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what I mean? So like anything that was aggressive was very hard for me to take in. And that's what, what showed me the truth about like watching TV shows. And it's like, fuck, everybody's on inst you know social media or watching TV or watching YouTube and watching all this terrible negative stuff. So it's like, how do you feel like you're going to be well if that's, it's like, I don't do it because like what the next day after I watch some shit, I'm going to be yelling at somebody at the bank because I can't control myself. You know what I mean? I don't, I just cut out those things that yeah. um, allow the negativity to get in because it will get to you at every crack you leave undefended, right? It's like, <laughs> I'm, I'd am i be making my bed and like somebody will come in and be like, you're a piece of shit. And also you did this and that and this. And it's like, uh, okay, thanks. <laughs> you know. And so now I kind of laugh at it or I say, okay, brain, I know you're just trying to make sense of some things for me, but um, thanks for saying that. We're going to move on now. <laughs> yeah. Your ego wants to like keep you in this safe, safe comfort zone, which is negativity. And like, no, you'll suck if you do that. Or, oh no, like, you know, and gives you all this self-doubt and stuff. So it's like, you have to get over that um, and learn how to just silence it, push it out of the way see it identify it see it for what it's worth mm -hmm. uh write it write about it get it out get it out exercise you know what i mean exercise is a good one about pushing the fucking bad shit out <laughs> mm -hmm. you know exercise is a big one eating well eating well is important drinking enough water is important um and then the things that we, we say to ourselves, the, the words that we use to describe ourselves is so important. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, I have bouts of anxiety and I've got a brain that is somewhat depressive. I know that. And sometimes I, that means I have to push harder. Like uh, I'll be in like three days will go by and I'll be like, you have been in bed. You get up. You like doing things. It's like, you got to tell, I got to remember to tell myself you like doing things. You like life. Mm -hmm. Get up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah. um, you're worth it. You're worth it. I mean, I, knowing my worth has been one of the hardest things to overcome and know what I deserve, you know, because I have been a poor person. I've been a person who used drugs. I've been, um, somebody that didn't really take care of herself or love herself or, you know, any of those things up until, you know, five and a half years ago, it was like most of my life up until I was 40 was, you know, in suffering. Yeah. Cause we were talking about this before we started recording with the self-worth, but how, how do you make yourself realize that you are worthy of awesome shit and that you are, you know, an amazing person and compassionate? Like, how do you see that? I have this giant whiteboard that I'm looking at in my room right now that I write things on. Um, the universe has my back. Focus on the good and on possibility. I always get what I want and need. Give myself space and time. I am the creator and the gift. Note to self, Stacy, you are very pretty and super classy. I am worth having it all. I see that. I mean, for my boyfriend, because sometimes I feel like, you know, where am I in my relationship? And I write, he loves me and thinks I'm great and worth it. You know what I mean? I have a, I wrote last night, I am fine in huge letters with an exclamation mark, you know? Because yesterday I had some anxiety. I did. I, so I had a call from the, well, I had to ask the band something and, and nobody was, it was just one of those like, oh, uh -huh. I don't like that, you know, and then it kind of, kind of put me in an anxiety state and, uh, and then I, somebody else called me to ask me some very big questions and I was like, oh, I can't answer that phone call, I, you know, and then I had this big dinner with the college afterwards and I was like, I can't go, you know what I mean? And, but I did it fucking all and it was it turned out super positive. It certainly turned out very successful. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, and I had people that I call my mom, you know, and some other friends that called me that were like, Hey dude, you got this. What, what? And it's like, I'm seemingly a super confident person. And most of the time I am, it's just like every once in a while, still, even through all my work, my brain comes and tells me some shit. And it's like, what I learned from it was I'm fucking strong as fuck and I could walk into that room and I can do it. Mm -hmm. I don't need to be afraid of anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know? 
you you're resilient you know and that strength I, I mean like i'm the same way like actually today was like weird like anxiety and shit for me today and um and I just, yeah, I'm like, I just, you, you can't just get up and move to a different room or go take a walk or like, you just no. have to change like <laughs> your scenery and your headspace. Otherwise it you will do. Just pull you down. <laughs> It'll eat you up. I don't know why our, I don't know why our brains want to go to the stuff that makes us feel sad. And I, I, I under, maybe it's because it is learning and growth and we all need to go through that to continue to, to go forward uh, in learning about ourselves. And I guess that's what life really is all about, right? It's yeah. like, if it was all positive, we wouldn't, we yeah. wouldn't even know. Right. Right. <laughs> I mean, that's what everybody says, but it's true too. I mean, like, and when you think about it, cause I've asked people before, like, do you believe in regret? And some people do, and some people don't, and I don't. And those who have also said they don't, it's the same reason where it's like, all of these fucked up experiences or challenges have shaped who I am. And then a lot, so many of these people are affecting others in a positive way now because of, you know, all the right stuff. So it's like, you can't trade that. So even like my upbringing, it's a hundred percent, my upbringing, everything that I was always mad about, it was like, I was born into the exact right family, the exact right situation, the exact everything for me to be what I'm doing today in my music and in my activism. Um, you know what I mean? It's like, I, I, I couldn't be or understand any of the things that I do had I had a charmed existence. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? one, of my favorite, one of my favorite mantras is um, trust the process. You're right where you need to be. That's a good one. Yeah. That one keeps me True. super balanced. And it kind of, I mean, it applies to all the difficult stuff where it's like, somehow this is going to work out. It's meant to be like things will unfold the best way. Yeah. So do you want to um, share and talk about the sidewalk project? Sure. I uh, have a 501c3 nonprofit called the sidewalk project. I started with my dear friends, Soma Snake Oil, um, who is an amazing artist and activist and dominatrix and all the things. And our other great friend, Emily Nielsen, who uh, d d does romantic rock. And right now she's really known for pu punk rock and paint brushes where all of our punk artists um musicians are doing have are their art and she facilitates art shows and tours and all this kind of stuff so yeah we started about three and a half years ago um we started as an art and music kind of wellness organization um as we all had been sober or changed our lives and perspectives so I, I as i was saying earlier i'm not sober anymore I, I i drink some wine and i smoke some weed but um Soma is still 100% sober and she probably will live that way for the rest of her life, which is great. Uh, but uh, we started as a music and wellness uh, group going down to places like Skid Row to try to get uh, artists that may have lost their ability to create creating again. Um, whether it's so we would like play guitar and sing together. Um, other other people would come from the street and sing with us. We'd play songs like, and it changed, play at last. And this woman radio came down and sang it like, what the fuck? Who the fuck are you? You know what I mean? Like, and she's like, just an amazing artist. And, uh, and then we'd paint together and, um, have a real big fun kind of block party with clothing giveaways and food and, uh, wellness kits, hygiene kits, uh, femme care kits, that kind of stuff. Um, but then as COVID happened, we kind of got really organized. We started zoom calling, uh, and having meetings with all of our volunteers. And we decided that we were going to go back out onto the street, but we'd go tent to tent and we really got into what's actually needed for people um, to, to help them untwist from some of the stuff that that ended them up on the street to begin with, whether it's mental illness, whether it's people who use drugs, whether it's uh, whatever reason. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're out there, and like we were saying earlier, you, you lose your ID because you've been swept by the, the police in, in so many times that you don't have anything anymore. It's like... <laughs> just getting glasses and your prescription and your medication and that kind of stuff starts like 
you start being able to be like, okay, I can get on top of some of this stuff, you know? Um, so that's really what we've done. We are, we are a, we're harm reductionists. Uh, we are a syringe exchange. We are a mobile syringe exchange. We're the first uh, mobile syringe exchange in Los Angeles in the last 26 years. Holy cow. Yeah. So yeah, Los Angeles is a little more um, conservative okay. compared to like San Francisco, which is like very progressive okay. and has safe injection sites and safe sleeping places and things like that, which is what Los Angeles needs because the overdose crisis is so much. So we've really fallen into what, what the great need is. And that's like very intimate and personal uh, human care for the, for our participants, for the people that we look after. So it's been wild. And, and since COVID, I, in, the universe is so good, right? It's like music kind of, I, I couldn't do music. And I said to the universe and it's, it was so fast. I said to the universe, one evening before I was going to bed, I said, whatever you want me to do, I need to, um, I need to work. So whatever you want me to do, uh, just put it across my path and I'll do it. The next morning I got an email from Soma, my partner that said, Stacy, will you please do this job? And I was like, yeah, I'll do that job. So, you know, I asked immediately and it was given to me like, this is what you're supposed to do. So here we are. Um, really trying to affect change in some of the most vulnerable population. Oh, that's so cool. Trying to change the stigma, trying to change how people look at unhoused folks. And mm -hmm. it's not a me and them kind of thing. It's like a, it's a we thing on this planet. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people need help and other people need to step up to help them. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I always wish that there was, you know, a way like when you see someone standing with a sign on the corner or whatever, um, it's like, sure, money, food, like that's good, but like give them a job, help them find a job, you know? I mean, Community. right. We've hired a few people from the street as well. Um, one of our uh, wonderful employees, her name is Virginia Riley. Uh, she goes by Russia. She, when we met her, was in a tent on the street. Um, we hired her. She's a sex worker. Um, she's a person that uses drugs. She's got some mental illness. Uh, but she's absolutely fantastic. She's just so wonderful. And she loves her community. So we, we give out Narcan for overdoses, uh -huh. trying to save people from overdose because it's a it's a epidemic right now. Um, and especially because of COVID, people isolating so we do Narcan and she goes out into the community and she nails Narcan up to the trees in, in the, in the streets. So people can run up and know that there's Narcan there. If somebody's overdosing, um, we, we, she was in a tent and then we raised money and got her a motor home. And then, so she was in a motor home for a while and then we got her into permanent housing and now she's got her own apartment. She's next door to one of her best friends. She's still in the Skid Row community. So she's still active in her community, but she's housed and she'll probably be housed for the rest of her life. That's awesome. So it's like seeing, like bringing people, keeping people in a community and, and uplifting them and, and letting them, elevating them so they uplift themselves. Oh, that's awesome. That's it's cool. very good. Yeah, yeah. it's very good. It's a, it's a. Here's an advert in less than 20 seconds. Did you know that Wellness Provisions offers one on one wellness sessions? Yep. So if you're seeking to get healthy and ahead in life, but feeling a little stuck, then book a session and let's get you unstuck. Now back to the interview. It's a, um, it's a gift. It's a blessing. And a, I'm so grateful that we, we get to do this and, and, uh, and it's, it really is one of the things that, that the, I, when I got sober and I got out of detox that the universe was saying to me, it's like, here's, yeah, I've given you all, I've downloaded it all to you. It's time for you to go out and help other people get untwisted from the same stuff that you just untwisted from. Because if you could do it, other people can do it too. Yeah. So like, what were some of your, I guess, I'm trying to think of the right word, like most um life-changing or important experiences when you started cleaning up your act uh what yeah impacted your your new path in life the most i guess well it started when i was in detox they i was it felt like i was being sla just punched pummeled with all the things i did in my life that were undes were terrible you know, uh, I felt guilty. I felt ashamed. I felt all of these things. And I was like, okay, 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 I get it. I get it. <laughs> 
And, um, and, and the first thing that I realized was, okay, I cannot change anything in the past. All I can do is go forward with a different perspective and a different attitude in a different way. So he, I'm going to tell you a story and this absolutely happened. And it was the night that I got out of detox. I had been in detox for 10 days. The night that I got out is when all the shit hit the fan. Um, I came home and I called Myra, my drummer, and I said, can you come help me clean my house? Because it was uh, it, I, in detox, the walls are kind of tan and there's nothing for stimulation. But when I got home, no shit, my walls were covered with like pictures of all my friends that were dead. It's like I shrouded myself in sadness. I just lived in it. And you didn't. I so mean, when I got home, I was like, oh, I can't look at any of this. You know what I mean? This is so sad. Um, so Myra came over and helped me clean a little bit. And then she left. And then I was in, in a terrible state. I was I was shriveled. I was like, the anxiety was so great uh, that it was painful. I was like, oh. you know, um, I thought I was going to have seizures. I thought I was going to die. So I started looking up like the food you eat to like not have seizures. And my roommate now, now, AJ, took me to the store and bought me all those foods. And and then that night when I was going to sleep, um, ugh, it was just the scariest thing I'd ever been through. I couldn't be on my own. But here I was in my room on my own. And it was like racing thoughts. And it was... It was, I was flipping poles, right? Like one minute I'd call my mom and my dad and their divorce and I'd call them separately from each other. And one minute I'd say, you raised a strong child. I got this. I got this. And then the next minute I'd, I'm dying. I'm dying. And it was like for hours, for hours. And I made my roommate stay in the, the downstairs living room because I couldn't, I left the door open. I couldn't be on my own. I couldn't. Um, and the last thing my dad said to me was, Stacy, ask the universe to stay with you. So I grabbed onto this pillow and it was something my mom made for me when she was pregnant for me and I've had all my whole life. So I was holding onto this pillow and I kept saying, universe, please stay with me. And I was so afraid to think of anything that anytime a thought would come in my head, I'd be like, oh, and I'd push it out. So I just like kept repeating, universe, please stay with me. 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 And I was hyperventilating. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I felt like I was floating on my bed and I had felt better than I had ever felt in my entire life. I was, I was like, oh, like, I felt better than I had felt on any drug I'd ever been on in my life. This was unlike anything ever. And then I started seeing things. You're going to think I'm crazy, but the, you know, ask anybody. I've told this exact fucking story. Nothing has ever changed. This happened. I started seeing myself going around to places like AA and NA, um, gathering people because they were already connected to this thing called something else where I was going to help people choose a different thing to do. You don't have to be doing what you're doing. Let's do something else. Like let's change that thought and do something else. Like, so then, it, and then it was with one of my, my closest friends at the time. Um, <laughs> she and I were going around getting people in groups to do this movement called something else. So then I saw myself going around the world with my ex-boyfriend friend um or with my ex-boyfriend and it was um helping people rebuild after natural nat natural disasters so helping uh communities rebuild build in a way that was aligned with their spirit so if like somebody was inclined to grow food they should grow food if there, somebody was like inclined to be a doctor they should do that if there was a musician they should do that like it wasn't have to do it was do because that's who you are yeah so here's an opportunity to like start this new path a new a new uh community a new city a new way of being that was aligned with who you really were instead of having to do things that you didn't want to do that made you miserable uh -huh. so that that i saw that and at the very end of this thing i see myself on this mountain it was all gold and i was on this mountaintop and i was pregnant and then I start slipping out of this thing and I start feeling terrible again. And, and, and during it, my cats and dog were rubbing up against each other. It was like, everybody was smiling. I was like, <laughs> you know what I mean? It was like, 
And then I start slipping out of it and I feel terrible, terrible, terrible. And I go out into the living room where my roommate was. And I was like, Oh, I just don't know what to do. I did. I... And then I get a text from my ex-boyfriend that said, I just had the gnarliest dream. And I was like, it's okay. I know what you're going to say. I already know. I called him. It was five in the morning. I called him and I said, what did you see? He goes, you told me you were pregnant. And I was like, that was all that I needed to be convinced that this side of life was real. That if I worked with the universe and that if I followed the messages and paths that the universe leaves for me, I have goosebumps even talking about it. I, have- I knew then it was proven to me that this was real. And so this was the path that I was going to be going down and it still wasn't easy. It was still, like I said, that the whole week I made my mom come, the ex-boyfriend came, I couldn't be on my own. And then the day before my 40th birthday, I was, I was having night terrors. Um, I was literally having t- night terrors where I would get up and think that what I was think dreaming was real. Um, and I, I realized that day, nobody is going to help you, but you, nobody, all the people that are around you can only support you. It's up to you to, to do this. Mm-hmm. So I found a, um, I found a outpatient program, which I was super poor at the time. I didn't know what I was going to be, how I was going to be able to afford it. Um, and I got myself over there. And I actually, when I walked into my therapist's office, when it was just therapy once a week, outpatient program is just therapy once a week. So I didn't know that. I thought it was like, I'm going to have to take classes. It's going to be $50 a class and I'm going to be there all day. Anyway, so I was like, you know, really worried. And then when I got to my therapist's office, I said, I was like, just with anxiety still. And I said, can my mom come in with me? And she's like, I think you could do this on your own. And I walked in. And my therapist was like glowing. She was all in white. And I was like, huh. And for whatever reason, the words that she used cut through to me. And it was based in positivity. And it was based in, um, it was just based in positivity, man. You know what I mean? It's like, we could go through all of the things that got you to where you, you know, you're hurting so bad. But like, now that you're here, you really need to focus on the good stuff. You need to smell roses. You need to take nice walks. You need, and it just cut through to me. And I walked out of there being able to go to a grocery store. I went to an NA meeting that night and I went up to Amoeba in Hollywood and, and like, no kidding for the week before that I could barely walk. Yeah. <laughs> You know, so it was like I, I and then I started seeing uh, how the negative was trying, like we were saying earlier, trying to get at me and every crack that I left undefended. So I started seeing negative negativity as an unstoppable rebel force that needed to be defended against. <laughs> and I treated it as like a hostile, you know, as hostile as it is. Yeah. You know, so it was like, no, you have no fucking space in my life. So it was like, that's where I started learning. You know, I I started learning to not watch things that trigger me from TV, to not listen to things that are sad and and sick. I needed to start looking at things that were different and and, um, ultimately got the amazing opportunity to change my perspective. And gosh, it's just one of the you could it's one of the easiest things to do but just the about the hardest motherfucking thing that you could ever try to do in your life you know it's like well it's you look at things change is basic but but executing it is difficult consistently right it it is consistently but it's like it, but it isn't at the same time it's just like you choose to see the things you want to see. It's like, instead, okay, 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 right. Even right now, I'm successful. I have a successful band. I have a successful business, but I don't have my own place. I stay at my friend AJ's house and between my boyfriend and AJ's house. And then I tour. So it's like, I could look at things a couple different ways, right? I could say, um, I don't have anything. I don't even have my own place. I don't have this. I'm a loser. I'm failing. Or I could say the universe has given me exactly what I need to be able to do the job that I'm doing. And I'm able to go travel the world and not have to worry about paying a rent. My animals are taken care of every, you know, I live between two beautiful places with two beautiful humans. You know what I mean? It's like, so I choose to look at things that way rather than being a victim. Right. I don't want to be a victim anymore. I don't. I don't. I just don't. (laughs) I mean, because that's the thing, though, with the negativity, too. It's like um, you have 
you have to have the awareness to really like see it almost like as a third party that like, okay, right. this is negativity. It's not me. This is, you know, these are thoughts, but they, it's not you and you can separate from them. You can a hundred percent. It's all this external, it's the reality that we live in that's, that's crashing down upon us mm -hmm. and it's up to us to change that reality. So it's a better place for everybody. That's what my song originators is about on our last record, the ride. It's like, that song is a, a being, being an originator means like choosing to create the life you really want to have. Um, you know, with the words that you use to describe yourself with, um, you know, yeah, you manifesting and, yeah, you write right. your own story. It's like you like right. I was talking to someone the other day and you know, he was not not super happy and I'm like you can literally right now choose to create from this point forward exactly what you want. If you know, I, and the, a lot of people are like, yes, yeah, Stacey, that's not for me, though. Not me, though. Not me. And it's like, you know what I mean? I, I can't get past. I can't. This is just who I, I can't. And it's like, okay, do me a favor for the next year. Instead, and here's the thing is like people want quick fixes, right? So if they do it for a weekend, they think that it's going to, and it doesn't stick. You think that it's going to, it doesn't work, right? So. For the next year, try to tell yourself you're a happy, positive person rather than telling yourself you're depressed with anxiety and watch your life change. And I know people are like, fuck you. You can't choose that. I'm, I'm saying you can because I did. I used those words and it took me a year before I stopped seeing, like no kidding, I would see like a bag on the street and my brain would think that's a pile of dead kittens. Instead, uh, you know what I mean? It's like my brain wanted to see it. it I had to retrain that shit. <laughs> yeah. I retrained that shit. <laughs> That's a good point is like you, like you can brainwash yourself with positivity, with whatever. I mean, like you can brainwash. With anything. Yourself, yeah, with negative shit. <laughs> yeah. Consuming bad music and bad, well, you know, um, less desirable or positive, you know, movies and things like that, or you can consume positive stuff. Negative comes much easier than positive does. You, you'll you find this with your conversations with friends. It's easier to get in a conversation with other people talking shit about somebody else because it's easier to bond over that than it is to bond over the happiness that's going on in your life. Yeah. So that's something with the band. Like if, if uh, shit's going in and we're in the van and somebody starts talking shit about somebody, like I'll let it go for like five minutes. And then I go, Hey, can we each say three nice things about that person? Well, yeah, I love her. And it's like, okay, let's not stop. Because if we let that perpetuate, then my band's fucking fighting. You know what I mean? It's like you let yourself get into these little patterns and then all of a sudden everything's fucked up. It's like, I don't want, I know, no, no, no. So the band, we don't do that kind of shit, dude. It's like, we, it took a while, but it was like, we, you know, we don't, we don't do that kind of stuff. Like, yeah. yeah. And you start to catch it and notice it, the more you'll start to catch it and notice yeah. it. hundred percent. Hundred yeah. percent. Same with self talk. I have a um, a buddy of mine, and when I say like, if I slip into something self talk negative, he he like pauses me. He's like, ah, and I, and then so then so now he's done that to me so much that I pause myself when I'm talking. If I notice I say something negative about myself, then I'm like, right. oh. and then you can change it. It's uh, now and now, it's much easier for me to to be on this side than it is for me to go. And, and I don't ever, and I don't ever want to go back to living a negative perspective. I, so that's why I work so hard at it with the journaling and the meditation and the yoga and the affirmations. And, and you know, I, I mean, there's a whole science behind it and I didn't make it up, but I swear to God, this is what the universe told me when I got better of how to have a good, happy life. Um, and I, and I listened. <laughs> You know, yeah. So I don't see. I don't ever want to go back to that, and I, I don't. Um, I don't see myself for so the rest of my life living that way. If someone came up to you feeling, you know, like overwhelmed or just less than in their life, what would you say to them? 
I mean, it depends on the person and the situation, but if somebody came up and they were like, I just don't feel like I'm worth anything, I would I would do my best to try to show them that they are through what they've done and what they're doing and how they show up for other people and, you know, that every, every motherfucking person on this planet is worth having a good life. Because <laughs> what is life? <laughs> Anyways, it should be greatly loved and revered and uh, celebrated and not hated life shouldn't be hated mm -hmm. it shouldn't be hated even if you're a person that uses drugs fuck it who cares like if you're happy doing that um until until you want some help and then i can help you get out uh, from underneath it but if that's what you're happy doing like i'm not gonna shit on you <laughs> you know i don't know i mean there's just there's so much to life right <laughs> There's just so much to all of it, man. And I'm just trying to get through it and guard against it. And, you know, and then I also really ask my peers, Hey, I'm going through this. What do you think about that? I'm really battling this thought right now. And how do I get around it? How do I remember who I am and remember that I am all of these things and that I'm, I'm good, you know? Yeah. And I still, I still deal with it. Worth, worth is the big one, right? It's like, am I worth my relationship? Am I worth having money? Am I worth having nice things? Am I uh, any of that stuff? Right. And that's been a real sensitive. I feel like I move in it. Like, <sighs> you know what I mean? Like, <clears throat> um, with money and stuff, it's like, like we were talking about earlier, uh, just knowing that I'm worth it, leaving the, and le then leaving it up to the universe to decide because I don't want to have to have to control that. Yeah. <laughs> but that's actually a good point too. Cause it's like, okay, like if you say like, this is my rate for, you know, singing on someone's album in the studio and help, you know, whatever. But then like, if you kind of like, just say I am worth it, like you could end up getting paid more. Yeah. And, so and probably will. Right. Yeah. Yeah, the more and more amazing things show up. I, I don't know how or why, but as soon as I'm open to it and not trying to control the outcome, like we were talking about earlier, um, I, everything kind of shows up or something better, which is something that I say to the universe a lot too. It's like, may I please have this or something better? Because I believe that, I believe, okay, I believe that this world is like a mirror, right? So whatever you're bringing into it is going to be given back to you. So like yesterday, having the, the anxiety and being frustrated, and it's like, as soon as I'm frustrated about things, everything starts falling apart. I trip over a rug. My this, this is over here. This is over here. It's like, stop, get your yoga mat out, stretch, get some of this shit out of your system. Like, no kidding. I'll be doing yoga and it makes me cry because I'm holding on to some stuff that I don't need to hold on to. And that holding on to stuff is what causes frustration and sadness and you know so it's like as much as i can get that stuck energy out the better chances i have <laughs> yeah. what does your meditation practice look like well i do i use insight timer okay. which is an app yep. uh, do you know insight timer i have it on my phone it's great. I, I do guided meditations all the time. Uh, I, I do them for like one time I was, uh, doing man a manifestation meditation and I was, it was before my boyfriend and I were like officially together. And, um, I saw in this manifestation, uh, meditation, I saw myself doing yoga in his backyard. And then months later, I'm doing yoga in his backyard and it felt the exact same fucking way. It felt the same. But you only thought about it like the one time in the, in the, like the manifestation thing, right? Just one. Right. It's like what I was focusing on. You uh -huh. know what I mean? Yeah. And then <laughs> six months later, I'm in his backyard in the spot. I see myself doing yoga, doing yoga. And I was like, well, this feels exactly the same way it felt like in my meditation. <laughs> <laughs> like no difference. Like no, I had to feel it as real. Right. So that's one of the things with manifesting is like not only seeing yeah. yourself, but really feeling that it's happened and being grateful for it yeah. uh, happening already. Mm -hmm. um, Cause then that makes it a thing. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's a feeling that uh, like resonates and somehow that's like the magic, you know, sprinkle that makes things 
manifest. It puts it in. It puts it into the world. It puts it into. The, it puts it into reality. I mean, fuck. We don't even know what we really are as human beings on this planet. Um, nobody can really prove anything to me. So as long as I'm trying these methods, and I got to say, like I was afforded, you know, a couple years of doing this work um, with a mother that supported me when I had nothing. And thank you, mom, so much. Um, but I got to to implement these ways to see if they really worked or not. And they did, <laughs> you know, I don't know what else to say. It's like, I'm no different than fucking anybody else, man. This is just what I've chosen, chosen to do and put into action. And it's been showing up for me over and over and over again. I also meditate on abundance. Uh -huh. Um, and, and I feel as though I live in abundance. Like, uh, I'm, I'm, I would say 95% of the time I'm, I'm real happy. I'm really happy. I've got everything that I want in life. I feel like I live in abundance and I have to for the cancer. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't want the cancer to come back. And that was one of the reasons why I started like drinking a little bit again was like, so I could have fun with my band and not be so restrictive. Cause if I'm restrictive, then like I'm in that fight and I don't want cancer to come back. You know what I mean? So I had to be like real. I'm responsible, you know, I'm not going to shit my life down the drain and become a miserable person because I drink sometimes, right. you know? Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm like processing that. It's a good, um, it's a good point because what did they say? Like low vibration and just like negativity is a breeding ground for sickness. Just is. And that's where most people are at, right? Mm -hmm. Not most. I would say what, maybe 20, 30% of the population on this planet is doing pretty goddamn well, but there is a real, I would flip you it. know, most people still feel like what they have isn't enough, but what they have is like fucking great. You know, if you right. have perspective, so if I, you just chose to look at it differently, right. Yeah. And vibing high too. Like that's a real fucking thing. <laughs> It's like, you can feel it. It's like a, a tangible feeling that yeah. when you're low and you go, and I fight through it, like, oh no, oh no, this is going to be like this. And then I go, no, everything is good up here. We're fine. This is happening. Everything's great. Like, and you stay there. I feel it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, it's wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Positivity is fucking awesome. <laughs> it is. And it's not just positivity. It's perspective. It's, uh understanding it's self-awareness it's uh you know in our song you you talked to me earlier about um that quote from victoria and i really struggle with that song because you know i had said there's no glory in dysphoria in that song and i actually believe that there's a tremendous amount of glory in dysphoria because pushing through to the other side of something where you're actually able to live your true self and be um you push through and you're able to get onto the other side of that. That is a huge fucking blessing. It's a huge gift, you know, and one that every human being needs to go through to grow, you know? Yeah. I like the quote um, that you said in another article, we need to build each other up and focus on the positives in ourselves and not just label ourselves with our mental illness. We all have something yeah. wrong with us. It shouldn't stop anyone from getting up and going out to have a great life regardless. Right. Right. What, I mean, even if you say you're depressed or you, you have bipolar mania or something, what's stopping you from going outside and smelling beautiful roses and being grateful for them? Watch that change how you feel. Mm -hmm. Being grateful for some shit. Like I write gratitude lists all the time. Like that's part of my journaling is the last page is a, I am grateful for, and I write a whole page or more. And uh, can I tell you one more story about this shit? Yeah. So I tell this story, I've told it a few times. Bad Cop was in the south of France at a festival. And the next day we had to fly to Belgium to play with Bad Religion. Okay. And it was just us and Bad Religion on this bill, just the two bands. And uh, if our plane was going to be at all delayed, we would miss this show. It was so tight for us to get there, but it was the only way. And bands do this all the time. So we get on the plane. It's not moving. We're sitting there for like an, an hour and then the guy, the, the pilot comes on the plane and he says, oh guys, I'm so sorry. We've got something broken here and it looks like we're not going to be able to fix it for another, you know, we're going to be here for another hour and a half. And in that we knew we weren't making the show. So instead of, I felt 
I felt the anger and all of the things rise up in me. And instead I picked out my journal and I wrote four pages of things I was grateful for. When I was done, the pilot comes back on and says, we're leaving in 10 minutes and we made the fucking show. <laughs> You're like a wizard. <laughs> I don't know. Jenny says that all the time, like in the tarot deck, I'm the magician, right? But it's because I'm in that space mm -hmm. of, of, I don't, I don't know if me writing that gratitude list made that shit happen, but it got me out of the space of being angry about it, which would have probably perpetuated more people being angry around me, making it more uncomfortable, more uncomfortable, more uncomfortable. But I lessened it uh -huh. and let the universe do its magic. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> I don't know why this shit works, y'all. I don't know why. That's the other thing. It's like, I'm not here to fucking say you have to do this or to be well. I'm saying this is what I do and it works. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not trying to fucking beat this into anybody, but if anybody wants to listen and try it, um, I'm, I'm in a better place in the last five years from doing this work than I've ever been in the 40 years before. It's amazing. <laughs> and it's true what you were saying I mean and what I had said in that quote and it goes to what we were saying earlier about what I put in my songs like I try to sometimes use an I am a lot in my songs so our fans can sing it and start owning that as as a gift you know what I mean it's like purposely I don't say you 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 I say I I I so people can own that when they're singing it to give them a leg up and lift up yeah even if it's subconscious Right. Right. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I try my hardest, man, you know, I really do. But that that's what I was saying. It's like you could walk through life and say you're depressed, say you you've got mental illness and rely on that as a crutch. Um and that's your reality and you could do that. That's fine. But if you don't want to live that way anymore, um there's there's a whole lot of stuff you could do to still have your mental illness. <laughs> but have a real good life mm -hmm. uh, without using that as a crutch as to why you can't do and be something great in this yeah. world. Excuses. Right. And to feel better as much as you can. I mean, you can still feel better. Mental illness or not, you can feel better. 100%. Yeah. With the food you eat, the things you say about yourself, going and taking walks, exercising, yoga, meditation, uh, smelling roses getting your feet into some grass or into the, into the ocean or connecting with nature, connecting with other, connecting with the wonderful energies that are really uh, happening, you know, in, in life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's grounding and it's important. Um, what's your favorite quote? Uh, Hunter S. Thompson, buy the ticket, take the ride. <laughs> Because I believe that if you decide to live a good life with its ebbs and flows and everything else and realize like you have to go down to come back up, you have to go down to come back up, um, that it is all a ride, which is what our whole last record was about, um, you know, journeys, you know, having cancer, all the things, you know what I mean? It's like, buy the ticket, take the ride, have a good life. Perfect. <laughs> People share their quotes. I'm just like speechless after because they're always like really, they're just good. And it's like, you like, what do you say? You can't say anything else after it. <laughs> Hunter S. Thompson had that wild ass life, man. You know, I know that he committed suicide, but it was by his own, um, his, it was, he wanted it to be the end. He couldn't swim anymore. He couldn't do all the things he loved to do. And so, you know, he was a, <laughs> was a madman, but had a one hell of a motherfucking life. <laughs> Yeah. So does Bad Cop have anything cool coming up in the next few months that you want to share on? Yeah, we have, uh, we're doing four localist shows in August um, in San Diego, Phoenix, and then in Long Beach in San Pedro, which is where we're from. Um, we're, we have, we're going out with The Last Gang and Make War and the Venomous Pinks are going to play with us in Phoenix because that's where they're from and we love them. Um, and then at, at the end in November, we're going out. Oh, we have punk rock bowling. Ah, cool. Yeah. We're doing, and we're doing Furnace Fest in Alabama. 
that same weekend. And then in November, we're touring with Anti-Flag on the East Coast for two weeks. Um, and Dolskin. Sweet. Yeah. I'm talking with uh, Chris number two next week, actually a week from today. We're doing it. He's interview. awesome. Tell him I said hi and I can't wait to hang with him. Yeah. <laughs> um, wow. This has been, we did, I usually set my alarm for 30 minutes. We've been talking for like an hour. So um, <laughs> awesome. I'm sorry. It's Don't good talk. stuff though, right? It's so good. I mean, then that's why I was like, I just want to keep like, keep talking because you've shared, I mean, for anyone who this is resonating with, you've shared so many good experiences that I think are inspiring and just really great um, options of healthy, mindful stuff that someone can incorporate in their life if they want to. 100% alternative living. We're living in an alternative life to what the, our reality suggests we should live. We're living yeah. our own. <laughs> yeah. Like punk rockness. <laughs> totally. DIY, man. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, have a wonderful rest of your day, Stacey. You too, Amy. It's nice to meet you. I'm Bye. so glad you wanted to, wanted to have this talk. <laughs> yeah, me too. Bye. <laughs> thousand lives I've been rich, been broke, been dope down and lazy, even been somebody's wife Yeah, I've hit the bottom and come back exciting An innovative world You say I look real cute So let's keep it civil I'll never be a simple girl